Hello and welcome to another of our developer videos on Tsugi. On this video we're going to talk a little bit about uh, developing a Tsugi tool like the uh, simple attendance example. I mean uh, it's a good starting point. And so I'll just show you in the admin uh, how you install tools if you don't already have them. Uh, you can manage the installed modules. Uh, in this case I've already got the uh, map uh, the um, the attendance tool is already installed. I could uh, do update. If not, it would be here and I could uh, choose, to in choose to install it, but it's already installed. So I'm going to go into developer mode. Developer mode is just a simple LTI client that allows us to launch the various tools that are installed in this particular sort of Sugi app store. And you can put this in production. Some people hide it in production, change the developer secret. This is a completely different, this is the one, two, three, four, five key. So Jane Instructor, and so you're not really a, a security risk because it's doing LTI launches using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in secret, and that should not be any production key. So this does it looks through all the mod folders, and there's more that can be more than one mod folder. Um, and this is the attendance tool, and you can just do an LTI launch. Um, I have an instructor account and two student accounts. Um, and uh, because Sugi does all this with... Uh, uh, cookie list settings, you can actually be open in more than one tab at the same time, and it's totally okay. Um, and so I can go into the attendance tool here as the instructor, and in the same tab, a different tab, I can be the student. And I am truly, thus st I stay being the student. Now you don't usually have to do this, but sometimes you do want to do something in a student view and then immediately like uh, check something in the teacher view. And so this, uh, the functionality of this is there is uh, users, and I, I kept this really simple so it doesn't show the user's name. Uh, you could make your a better one. And so you, the teacher enters a code, and um, we'll make it one, two, three, four, and then the student can enter the code, and then the teacher can uh, refresh the screen. Oh, that was the that was the student refreshing the screen. The teacher refreshes the screen and uh, sees that user 4 has done an attendance. And if we uh, switch to Sue, uh, Sue student or Sue student, if they don't know the code, then they can't uh, attend. Um, I'll just close this because you can just switch back and forth so easily um, between them, right? So one, two, three, four, and we'll go back to the teacher and we can see that it's all working and we change the code for a new class. We can clear the data and away we go. So that's how this application works. Now this is stored in uh, SugiTools slash attend in GitHub and um, the interesting thing about this is it has a number of permanent branches. Uh, master is kind of this classic style of a single PHP file with a model view controller in it. Handlebars and Silex and Temple.js are just three different styles that all sort of work equivalently. And what I'm going to talk about in this video is kind of everything but index.php and then I will have a separate video about index.php and then how you sort of construct index.php and this is using some JSON, it's handlebars, and I will sort of co cover each in turn. But let's first start talking about kind of the environmental files and then leave the actual code for it uh, later. So in this uh, there are two files that are essential. There is the database.php file, and this is a PHP file that is included by the, um, the administration tool. So if I go into administration and I say upgrade database, and then it runs through all of the things with all of the different tools that are installed and the core tables and decides whether they need upgraded or created. So if you install a new module, you have to do an upgrade database and how each module informs this is borrowing the name kind of from Moodle, database.php. And the way we do it is we create uh, three variables, the database uninstall, sort of to get rid of it, and the database install, and in another one I will show you a more complex win, which is the database upgrade script. But this I just created a table and I didn't have to upgrade it. If you want to see like the most complex set of options for how to make a database.php work, um, just go to look at this, at the one of the tables. This is the core data model for all of Sugi. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of foreign keys, a lot of, you know, 
cool stuff. And then you come down to this database post create. That's another global thing that says once the tables are created, if you want to do some uh, priming inserts. Um, and so there is, there's priming inserts there. And then database upgrade, you get passed in this old version. And I used, again, the Moodle convention of kind of a Julian date with time in minutes and seconds. And then what you do is you're told what your old version is. And you run through. And most of the times, these will only trigger once because at the very end, end of the file, you return the new version. So you would add to, to your file a new thing, and then you would return that version. So I just, the most recent change was to add this line and return that version. And that way, after this runs once, it'll come back into this after the next database upgrade. In a sense, every time you say this, it runs that code again, but it tells you that the database upgrade is, uh, the database is known by Tsugi to be this. And so it's a it's an upward migration. If you're familiar with Ruby on Rails, it's kind of like an upward migration. We don't have downward migrations. Um, we could. Uh, we could have a migration that was a later upward migration, perhaps, that would delete a column, but we can't undo them backwards. I didn't see a lot of value in going backwards. Um, you just are kind of always growing. And so this is a way to look at a more complex database.php. But this one so far just has a table, and it doesn't have any post hooks, post create hooks, and it doesn't have any um, upgrades yet. But you can do that when the time comes. It's quite easy. And then you just tell your folks to run upgrade database. And when you install or uh, upgrade a module, uh, this code right here actually checks and says, oh, hey, it's time to run an upgrade database. And then it reminds you to go back and do an upgrade database. So that's how our attendance tool maintains its attendance table. And so um, here's uh, Sugi, and um, so this attendance table we created with that script. So the and so that script creates it, and those are the five fields that are sitting here, uh, the five fields that we we put. Now, one of the things that you're uh, supposed to do is you're supposed to always have at least one foreign key to a core data structure, which is the link, or to perhaps to the user. This has two. You have to have a minimum of one um, because it's either the link or the course or the user, basically, because those transitively go up to the keys for the tenants. And this way we can track data in each tool all the way down to uh, your data in the tool. So you've got to have fully connected and fully on delete cascade on update cascade. That way we can get rid of or migrate on an entire tenant uh, all at once by sort of following all the tables. So leave these. We don't do this very often, but this leaves us a little sort of breadcrumb trail um, to the core database tables. And the core database tables, of course, are these tables sitting here, the link, the context. Now there's a whole video on, um, on the uh, tutorials. There's a whole video on the data model. And so watch that. It talks about how you're supposed to connect your tables to the core tables. Uh, just so they're not just sitting out there in the middle of nowhere. You got to have at least one link, and then within your own um, within your own tool, you got to have you you. If you're going to have lots of tables, they eventually have to all be linked together. You can't just create uh, unconnected tables. Okay, so that is the database.php file, um, and so we also have uh, internationalization. And you don't necessarily have to use the same internationalization as we do. This is a classic uh, PHP application. And so it does things like uses this double underscore, which Sugi provides, imitating uh, WordPress. That's how WordPress allows a string to be looked up. And so you have the uh, internationalized strings, attendance recorded, and then there's a way to scan and pull those out. And then you create these files with editors, and I have a whole separate thing that creates the locale. And then there is this, um, this PO file, which is sort of a plain text. It's not really intended to be edited by humans. There's programs that do this. And then there is the MO file, which is sort of a dense processed version of this. And all this feeds, and Sugi takes care of it, sets up the locale, sets up get text, and sets up that double underscore code in index.php so that you just basically say this is my thing you know and um, 
And so that way you just say, please internationalize that with the current uh, locale if it is what you want. Okay, so that is those, that is those, that's that file. Now that doesn't mean you have to do that, but this is a pretty good convention. And if you're using kind of classic PHP, if you're doing something that's totally server side like React or Angular, then you might decide to use a completely different mechanism for that. Sugi tools do not, are not forced to uh, use the same internationalization. It just has to be internally consistent. And then the last file I'm going to talk about is the register.php file. And, uh, and so the idea there is this is another included file. This is used for LTI2, uh, representing this tool in LTI2, or uh, in content item when we need to have a, a font, a, 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 an icon for it, or a name or description. There's all kind of user interface places that says, hey, what is this tool? What's its name and its description? So this is kind of like the way that this tool is registered with the, the, the rest of the system. It doesn't matter while the tool is running, but in anything that's going to be doing any directory kind of work, or if we ultimately put this in something like the learning registry, this data is going to be really important because this is how the rest of Sugi is going to find out and understand your tool. Okay, and so that pretty much covers everything except the index.php. And so the next thing I'm going to, in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go first through the index.php that is in the master branch, which is a classic single file model view controller uh, template at the end, and then I will do other model view controller patterns, okay? So uh, I hope you found this helpful, and I uh, hope you move on to the next video where we talk about uh, the index and calling all the APIs.